Probably the, the part to take away from this is, is two things. One, uh, I was a, Ver a Verisent customer for seven years before I joined Verisent. So bring to the customer success organization that real history of being a customer and, and what that was like. Um, and the second piece is I think it's a little bit unique that I have both product strategy and customer success. So I'm thinking back to guys talk this morning around customer success is your product. Um, all of that really resonates for us and how we're thinking about it and how we think about getting feedback from our customers. Uh, so a little bit about our journey. So to, to kind of talk you, to you about NPS, it's really important to kind of understand from a customer perspective where we've been. So Verisent was founded in uh, January of 2005. We are a sales performance management company, so we do everything from territory and quota planning to how to take a look at your sales incentive plans and determine if they're effective, which opportunities you should be working, and then ultimately how to pay your reps and administer that compensation. So that's where we started as an organization. Uh, grew very rapidly uh, in 2010. Deloitte named us to uh, the Fast 500 and the fastest growing software company in Canada. And so uh, once that came out, uh, we became acquired by IBM. And so IBM and Verisent, very different in size and scope and everything that they, they do. So we spent the next uh, eight years as part of IBM. And why that's important on our customer journey is we were a very small fish in a very big pond. In 2019, NPS surveys that we could attribute directly to what we were doing was 47 surveys for the entire year. So this is kind of where we're starting from, which is why when you come into now 2020, as we rolled out of IBM and went private again, it becomes really important um, because we really were starting from scratch even though we weren't a brand new company. Since 2020, as we rolled out, we have done a number of acquisitions as well as started some new products on our own. So we've got a, a wide variety of customers, some that we acquired through the acquisitions and some that have been with us since early days of what we call Verisent 1.0. So as we go through the journey, helpful for context setting around that. So when I joined the organization in late 2020, um, I said, tell me what we're doing from a customer success perspective. And they, they pulled out this customer, customer journey. And, and while the, it's not intended for you to be able to read all the words on the page, I'll, I'll tell you the gist of it which is uh, the column, uh, the first column lists all the functional departments within Verisent. Across the top talks about the stages of implementation and onboarding and all of that. So feedback was one thing, an NPS survey, and it was a point in the journey, not a cycle, right? And so this tells you a little bit about how we were thinking about it. It was a very, inside out view of customer success, of NPS. What did we need our customers to do at different stages? So good thing we were starting to ask about NPS, but we weren't quite there. So when we did ask about NPS, it was very fragmented within the organization. So we, we had support users that we surveyed. We had in product users. We had near product users. We had decision maker users. And it was all done through different tools. The response rates were very different. Their overall sentiment was very different. And so it wasn't super helpful to understand where do we go from here? So again, the right thought, good that we were surveying, but not a lot of data. The data that we did get was dumped into Excel. Anybody else do this before, right? So we had these Excel surveys, which you know are, are so lovely. So what we would do is we'd send out these emails to our, our CSMs and say, well, by the way, here's the file. Go find your customers, and here's what I want you to do. I need you to call and try to set up a, a phone call, and if you can't do that, then I want you to email them. And then, by the way, after you talk to them, I want you to document in either another Excel file or send me an email and tell me how it went, right? not really helpful for moving the needle on NPS and really understanding what our customers were looking for. So how did we take this information? Well, as we came out of IBM, again, with very limited information, not a real well-oiled NPS process, 
we again, we tried to do what we thought was best for the customer. So we had created this Meet the New Verisent program, trying to differentiate ourselves from, from where, what we were under IBM. So we instituted a number of customer-facing programs intended to help meet them where they may be. These were free programs, um, ideally intended to boost NPS. But again, because we had no data, and the data that we had was on disorganized Excel spreadsheets, this also was a shot in the dark, right? All right, so here's where we start to turn it around and say, okay, what would we do if we wanted to do it differently? And so I said, okay, you know, we've got these categories of users. Some of them are brand new to us, or they could be brand new to the product. So not a new customer necessarily, but new to the, a new product that they had purchased from us. They could be just starting to use it. They could be pretty experienced, or they could be champions. So now we started thinking about, okay, well, what do we want them to feel? What do they want to feel at each stage in the journey? So a novice is just saying, I just need to know who to call for what. That's what I need right now, right? All the other stuff, you know, what you're going to do for me three years from now doesn't matter. I, I just, I need to know who to talk to now, right? So what is it that they need? How do we want them to feel at each stage in the journey? So we started to put in place different goals around that. You know, how do we want them to feel? We want them to find more value. Gosh, we want them out there wearing Verisent swag because they're so ex excited to be associated with us. And then what are the different activities that we think that we can help them do to achieve that, to achieve their goal, to achieve our goal? So it's, we really turned it on its head and said, okay, how do we now make this an outside in journey versus this is what my department needs at this point in time, right? So this was really kind of the big change for us as, as we went through the process. So we really started again with the customer. How do we get the feedback from them through NPS? But we said, okay, NPS is not the end all be all, right? You know, NPS I think can be used for a number of different things. And we had this talk internally where I said, are we, are we doing an NPS survey because we want to understand what our customers really think and ways to improve? Or are we doing an NPS survey so we can give a number to marketing so they can put it in a flyer and say, hey, we've got a 60 NPS, right? Two very different things. I can sample very differently depending on what my goal is. And so we said, no, what we really want to do is understand what our customers think and how they're feeling. And then beyond that, when we've got these customers who have fabulous experiences, we want them to share it. We want others to know. So that's where we started to get into the peer insights. And what we focused on here for us was G2. So we said, we have a desire to have more G2 surveys. We know that people are buying online. They are looking for outside sources to get feedback. And in G2 in our industry, it was really the primary one. And then what additional information can we get if we start to now not just leverage NPS, but leverage G2, Trust Radius, these other outside sources, can we get different and more robust data to then feed our system? How do we analyze it and ultimately continue to improve that for our customer and their experience? So what we did was we bought Tatango. We said, you know, we, we can't continue going on by, by using Excel and, and sending out all these emails. We really need an automated process. Um, you know, interestingly enough, my team, they were saying, oh, we can do this in, in Salesforce. And I said, we cannot do this in Salesforce, right? We need something very specific. So we, we brought in uh, to Tango. And we said, when we were going through the implementation phase, the first thing we wanted to implement was NPS. That was really the most important thing for us. So we brought it in and we started to differentiate within the tool and say, okay, what happens if they're a promoter? If they give us a nine or a 10, what's, what do we want to have happen? What if they give us a seven or eight? What if they give us a zero to six? And started to break that out. So now we've got customized emails that now go to the different segments of the population. But because one of the big things that we wanted to do was also to drive what's visible online through other reviews, we said, 
how can we use NPS, how can we use Tatango to now drive those external review sites as well? So then we started to tie it into G2. So now this shows 158. We actually are up to, uh, earlier this week, we were at 174. We started January 1st with 124 reviews, which had been um, over the past three years. Three years it took us to get 124. Since January, when we implemented this new process with Tutango, we've gotten almost 50 reviews in two and a half months. So a huge lift. And not only have we gotten the reviews, we've maintained our rating on G2 at, at the same high level we were at. So really positive because when you look at the survey companies, a big portion of what your overall score and ranking is based upon is how many surveys you get, right? It's like when you're out on Amazon, it's like, oh, well, three people think this is a great product. Eh, you know, oh, 3,000, 30,000 do. Oh, really stands out to you. So it was really important to us to maximize um, the number of reviews and then the overall review. So again, this is, this is the chart over the past uh, nine months. And so you can see we had, you know, November and December, we had a spiff in place for CSMs to get reviews, right? You can see that nice pop there, right? But, but other than that, we were sitting around five reviews a month, if even that. Um, and then in March, March is over 25 now for the month. So we have seen tremendous improvement through the use of Tutango and automating this process uh, to really get that, um, that traffic up from a review perspective. But beyond that, it's important to us because one of the things that we also get through G2 and Trust Radius is not just you get the NPS score would you recommend, right? But they also go much deeper. So, you know, what's the ease of use? What do you think of the price? What do you think of the onboarding? All of this. They also can now score us on this. So now think about it as you almost have an NPS score that you're able to capture now through each stage in your process which really allows us then to dig in differently than we could if we just said, oh, they're a happy customer. Well, they're happy, but the ease of use, they're like, eh. We wouldn't see that necessarily unless they give us some really good verbatim comments to say, gosh, we really need to reach out to them, understand what are they, what are they struggling with, how can we make that easier? So by driving more reviews, by doing all of that, we're able to get much better feedback and not only can we get it in, in aggregate across that, but you also can do segmentation. So we've been able to say, well, is it different by industry? Is it different by size of customer? How do we wanna think about that differently? And then from there, we're working on the improved portion. So I talked earlier about how we had that meet the new Verisent. Well, now what we've done is we've morphed that now into what we call the Verisent Advantage and all the additional benefits that you get from working with us for just for being our customer. So now the list that we have here is actually based on feedback from our customers. These are the things that they've said, gosh, th we would really find value in this. You know, gosh, we don't wanna be nickeled and dimed every time we have a question. For free, ask the expert hours, uh, which is kind of any type of consulting work on a quarterly basis, that would be really beneficial to us. So we were able to build that into our process as well, as well as now we've also started to link it in with user voice, which is something that we had but wasn't well leveraged. And we've able, been able to expand this as well now to say, how do we now also gather feedback from multiple sources and allow our customers to start to upvote and downvote ideas so we get a much better sense. So where are we going from here? So we actually just this past month decided, okay, let's take it one step further. So our primary customers, the folks that we interact with the most are usually in sales ops parts of the organization, right? They're sales, sales ops um, analysts, it's comp, sales comp administrators, those types of folks. So that's typically who we're surveying. But there's a secondary customer, the actual sales reps. So now what we've done is we've gone to our customers and said, hey, would you allow us to actually now reach out and survey your sales reps? So now all this process that we've been doing with our, the, the sales ops team, we're now doing with the sales reps themselves. So they're now giving us NPS reviews. They're now giving us G2 reviews. 
Some of that is really helpful for us building out the product. The other piece is that's really valuable information for our customers, those sales comp administrators, those sales ops folks around what's working and what's not. Because oftentimes it's like, gosh, I wish we had a report that did this. Well, we can help them build that report, right? Or I wish that you know I could get this on my mobile device. Well, did you know that this actually can be mobile enabled, but your company hasn't yet, right? So why do we do that? Well, if the sales reps love the tool, how likely do you think it is that sales ops is gonna rip and replace? They're just not gonna do it, right? So from our perspective, having that tool that not only delights the sales ops folks, but also delights the sales reps, means kind of greater engagement, greater retention, greater opportunity for upsell, and ultimately a better product across the board for our organization. So, in the, again, the very short time that we've been a customer uh, of Tutango, this is what we've been able to drive. So we're super excited about the progress that we've made here and um, thrilled to answer any questions that, that folks have about it.